let's just review the numbers here because I know the media has been trying to cover this up. Fix the budget so that Canadians have powerful paychecks that buy affordable food and homes in safe neighborhoods. Exactly the opposite of what we've seen because after eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost of food, homes, and everything else. In fact, everything Justin Trudeau has touched in eight years has gotten worse. Let's go through his promises. In 2017, he created an affordable housing program of $89 billion. What has happened since then? Housing costs have doubled. He doubled rent, mortgage payments, and down payments. In fact, when Justin Trudeau became Prime Minister, after I left him an affordable housing market as Housing Minister, at that time, it took 38% of a family's income to make payments every month on an average home. That number is now 64%. An astonishing fact remarked upon by the liberal international magazine called The Economist. They actually tweeted it out because it was so astonishing, even though it has been largely suppressed by the state-controlled and state-funded media here in Canada. After eight years of Trudeau, we have tent encampments in every major city. Halifax has 35 homeless encampments alone. After eight years of Trudeau, we see 26 international students crammed into the, the basement of one home in Brampton. And the guy who screwed up the immigration system to cause that mess, <laughs> Sean Fraser, is now in charge of housing. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, it takes 25 years to save up for a mortgage for the average, sorry, for a house uh, down payment for the average family in Toronto and 29 years for the average family in Vancouver. You used to pay off an entire mortgage in that time. After eight years of Justin Trudeau's carbon tax, we now have two million people lined up at food banks, a record-smashing total. Images of people around, lined up block after block that if they were made into grainy black and white images, you would think you were looking at a documentary from the great depression. After eight years of Trudeau, there is now a Facebook group called the Dumpster Diving Network, where people share tips, 8,000 people share tips on how they can eat out of a garbage can. In fact, it's true that you can't afford to live after eight years of Trudeau and the NDP, but you know what? You can't afford to die either. In Newfoundland, there are 28 dead bodies in freezers outside of a hospital next to a dumpster because their families cannot afford a burial or cremation. This would have been unimaginable before Trudeau and his NDP government took office. And all these deficits, all of the doubling of the national debt, remember it was supposed to stimulate growth? We've had the worst per capita GDP growth of any country in the G7, and by far. That is the disastrous record of Justin Trudeau. And yet, he wants to keep going. Over the last several weeks, he has been pouring fuel and not water on the inflationary fire that he lit with tens of billions of dollars of new spending for the same old programs that caused the misery in the first place. Even liberals are starting to speak out. Today, proud liberal and former Bank of Canada governor, governor David Dodge, who worked for Martin and Cretchen, has said that this budget is on track to be the worst since 1982, as Trudeau doubles and triples down on the costly failures that have left Canadians hungry and without homes. So my message is simple. We're stuck with this costly coalition for a year and a half, it looks like. There will be an election where Canadians will choose between 
the costly coalition of the NDP and Trudeau who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget and stop the crime. But there's still another year and a half where Canadians have to find a way to survive. So my message to Justin Trudeau is this, in one word, stop. Stop doubling housing costs. Stop taxing our farmers and food when our single moms and seniors are going hungry. Stop the inflationary deficits that are driving up interest rates and forcing Canadians to lose their homes. Stop endangering our social programs and jobs by adding more and more debt. For the love of God, Justin Trudeau, you are not worth the cost. So today, will you please stop? Stop until common sense conservatives can start governing with common sense for this country. A common sense plan to axe the tax, to bring down the cost of energy, food, and everything else. We will axe the carbon tax. That will make our businesses more competitive, our wages higher, our food more affordable. We'll cut income tax so hard work pays off. We'll fix the budget by bringing in a common sense dollar for dollar law that requires that we find one dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending while we slash the waste and reduce the burden on the backs of Canadians, a smaller government with bigger citizens. We will build the homes by requiring municipalities permit 15% more home building as a condition of getting federal funds and that they permit high density housing around every transit station. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. We'll take the carbon tax off so that building materials are more affordable and we'll stop the crime with jail not bail for repeat violent offenders, with treatment not more drugs for people addicted and with stronger borders and secure ports to stop the criminals from taking our stolen cars out and bringing drugs and guns in, all while we respect lawful licensed firearms owners. This is the common sense future that we can look forward to. The good news is life wasn't like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. We're gonna restore the country that we knew and still love, where hard work pays off, where government is the servant and not the master, where government is the servant and not the master of the people, where hard work means an affordable home and food in a safe neighborhood. This is the country to which we can look forward. This is the country that common sense will build. The common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you. So this is exactly what Justin Trudeau promised in 2015. And now, Justin Trudeau and his wealthy friends are paying less tax. Trust fund Trudeau. The guy who hid his own fortune, his own family fortune in a trust fund so that he could protect it from taxes while raising taxes on everyone else is not going to take money from the billionaires that give him free vacations on islands in the Caribbean. We already know where the money's coming from. It's coming from single moms, seniors, and small business owners. He says he's not raising taxes on the middle class in this budget. He already did on April 1st with a carbon tax that makes every middle class family pay more than they get back in rebates. And let's just review the numbers here because I know the media has been trying to cover this up. This is across the country in uh, the carbon tax cost for the average middle class family. This year, Albertan, the middle class, this is the middle quintile, the Alberta family will pay 911 more in taxes than they get back in rebates. Saskatchewan, $525 more than they get back in rebates. Manitoba, $502 more than they get back in rebates. Ontario, $627 more than they get back in rebates. Nova Scotia, 537 more than they get back in rebates. PEI, 550 more than they get back in rebates. 
Newfoundland and Labrador, 377 more than they get back in Libra. These are numbers that will increase over time, and these are the numbers for middle-class fund families, the middle quintile, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer. So it is the working class people that Justin Crudeau is ripping off with his high inflationary taxes and spending, and everything else he does today will be political theater designed to distract from that. So the, to be clear, the, the government's not proposing that. The government is proposing to increase taxes on the working poor and the middle class. Uh, remember, it's funny that the media reports on his latest promises as though that they're brand new. He promised this in 2015, and since that time, he's doubled housing costs on the working poor. He's increased taxes on the food of single moms and seniors. He has increased the gap between rich and poor, and he has protected people like him with trust funds and with islands, private islands, where they take him on vacations. So we know that the people, the billionaires that host Justin Trudeau on their private islands will be protected again, as will people like Trudeau who have trust funds where they shelter their money. Common sense conservatives will axe the tax and lower income tax for working class people so that they bring home more powerful paychecks. Thank you. Well, I mean, the, uh, our, our common sense plan uses technology and not taxes. Uh, we would, instead of driving up the cost of traditional energy that we still need, common sense conservatives would drive down the cost of alternatives. Where Justin Trudeau wants to put stop signs in front of our workers, we want to green light green projects like nuclear, hydroelectric dams, uh, mining of lithium, cobalt, and other necessary minerals, offshore energy, and of course carbon capture and storage. All of these, pro these clean, green alternatives to bring abundant, affordable, clean energy have been blocked by Justin Trudeau's anti-development law, C-69, a law that I will quickly repeal as it is unconstitutional to unleash production and paycheck and bring home money to our country. He's broken every target. You know, you, I just find it interesting that you, you ask me if I'm going to keep the promises that Trudeau has broken. You know, he's impoverished our working poor. He's driven two million people to the food banks. He's driven a hundred billion dollars of investment out of our country. He's helping Qatar and Venezuela and Iran fill their coffers with money and, and, our, air, and our air with pollution by driving money out of our country. So he gives money to dirty dictators and fails to meet our targets. I want to bring home production and paychecks for our people in this country, and that's my target. Let's bring it home.